Are you ready kids? So bad hackers, criminals, no good, state sponsored actors, all trying to break into your network, steal your intellectual property, steal your customer's data, steal your payment information, put you out of business. So what can you do to prevent these? I mean, it's clearly a losing battle. If governments, if multi-million pound international companies can't keep these no good villains out, what chance does the average person like me or you have? But I'm here to tell you that even without the latest AI powered machine learning algorithm like Ultron to defend you, you can make good inroads. Hi, I'm Javad Malik, a cybersecurity professional, a world record setter, and a certified genius. Cybersecurity is ultimately down to risk management. Everything you do, every control you put in place, every policy you write should bring the risk down. If it isn't, then it's just brass on the Titanic weighing you down and gonna sink to the bottom of an ocean. So look at what all the risks are to your organizations and look at what is the root cause that causes these risks to manifest in the first place. I went out looking at all of these risks and the root causes, and it comes down to four things that if you protect against, you can greatly reduce the risk of your organization being attacked successfully. These four things are to mitigate social engineering attacks, patch exploitable software, beef up your credentials, and implement MFA or multi-factor authentication. Now I know a lot of cynics in security are gonna be, how do you know all of this and how can I prove it's true? So my sources are, trust me, Roger Grimes' blog, and basically any research into attack trends ever published. Before expanding on these four points, I will add a little caveat that I'm not saying just do this and sit on your laurels. Defense in depth is still an important part of cybersecurity. So where appropriate, the controls actually will reduce your risk and your exposure, do go and implement them. Don't just implement these four things and come crying to me later saying that, hey, you told us to do this and now we're breached, pay our 50 million pound ransom because I will just simply laugh. Okay, so number one, mitigating social engineering. This is super important because whenever you look at the attack statistics, whether they be from average cyber criminals, lone wolves, or even state-sponsored actors, that by far the most common attack vector is social engineering. Depending on which report or stat you refer to, it could be anywhere between 50 to 95% of all successful attacks are as a result of social engineering. In the majority of cases, this is like a spear phishing email, but it could also be a, a USB stick dropped, or, but increasingly we're seeing this come across in different channels such as SMS or social media. In social engineering attacks, the criminals will try to get you to reveal some personal information such as your passwords, your payment information, information about your organization, intellectual property, all that kind of good jazz. So if you can prevent social engineering attacks from being successful, you can at very least reduce 50% of the successful attacks. That is a huge risk reduction. So if you can better mitigate social engineering attacks through any means, better procedures, better technical controls, better user awareness and training, whichever method you choose to use, this will give you the biggest return on investment and greatly reduce your risk overall. That's why that's number one. Number two is to patch exploitable software. So we all run software and every now and then it'll pop up with there's a new update available. That's always good to keep up to date. Now, when you've got a larger organization, updating stuff can take services offline for a period of time. You don't know whether that update could have any detrimental effect to any of your other systems. So there's a bit of testing that sometimes needs to go on. Also, it's not easy because there's nearly always a update or a patch available for some software or hardware somewhere in the organization. So to simplify this, you don't actually need to patch absolutely everything all the time, although that's good practice, but you need to know what your assets are, what are critical and what is actually exploitable by bad actors. Then prioritize them and fix those. It sounds simple, but this does get really complicated really quickly. That's why having a good asset inventory, knowing what software you have, knowing what versions are being run, knowing how your network is architected and what can be reachable, these are all really important bits of groundwork that need to be done before this is put in place. I think good password hygiene is of utmost importance. Criminals are always trying to guess or brute force your passwords or 
they know that a lot of us reuse the same passwords across different sites. So they'll try to breach it from one site and then use it against other sites. The single best thing you can do is to choose a unique or a, a different password for each website. And I don't mean just adding a number at the end of it or adding the name of the website to it because that's too easily guessed, but actually having a genuinely unique password for each website, that is quite difficult. So using a password manager can really help in that regard, or at least for your critical websites, like your banking, your email, try to choose a, a unique password for at least those. Fourth and final step, which is tied into your credentials, is to use multi-factor authentication wherever it is available. Now, a growing number of sites allow you to enable multi-factor authentication. That means that when you log in, you don't just need your ID and your password, but you also need a code. Now, this code could be on an app on your phone, which changes every 60 seconds or so, or it could be texted to you in an SMS, or it could be emailed to you. Whichever method is available, I suggest you take advantage of that. That way, even if a criminal guesses your ID and password, they cannot log onto your account without your code. And that on its own increases the security of your account immensely. And there it is. I'm saying if you implement these four steps, which in themselves aren't quick and easy, but if you work on these, you can have the greatest return on investment in your security. You can really greatly reduce the risk and you can end up with a far more secure organization. Don't get distracted by those fringe cases, which are solved by some very specialist software. Those are good. Once you do this, do the fundamentals, and then you can move on to those. But until then, Focus on the core aspects and you should be in a far more secure position. This is the cold hard truth. No one else will give you these tips that will make you far more secure. So off you go and stay secure, my friends.